It was business as usual in Windsor this morning for the changing of the guard. But this afternoon, some of the town centre will be closed off for the arrival of the torch. In her 60-year reign, the Queen has seen most things. But the Olympic torch travelling through the grounds of Windsor Castle, even for the Queen, will be something quite special. And interestingly, interestingly, back in 1948, in the last London Games, the Queen, then as Princess Elizabeth, wasn't particularly involved. She was actually pregnant with Prince Charles at the time. So this time round, it's obviously going to be very different when, as head of state, she will officially open the 2012 Games. And trade and so on. But uh, that final thought was, of course, uh, directed towards Windsor, where the French president is heading next. And we can show you the pictures live from there now because uh, the Queen and uh, 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 Duvenda, there we are, uh, receiving uh, uh, that torchbearer who will be delighted to uh, be able to be so up close and personal uh, as it is day 53 of the torch's journey. Let's just uh, hear from Daniela Relf, our correspondent, who's there watching proceedings. Yes, it has been absolutely rotten weather here in Windsor, almost perfectly timed for the moment uh, the Olympic torch entered Windsor Castle. We can see the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh with Lord Coe there. They've had to take cover in a sort of archway uh, in the main quadrangle in Windsor Castle. They are now meeting... Uh, various members of those involved with the Olympic torch teams, with the design of it, with the schedule of it, the running of it, the security. Um, they are now getting their own first-hand stories of what it's been like. And it was um, absolutely terrible weather for poor 74-year-old Gina McGregor, who had to run the torch through the rain, through the grounds of Windsor Castle, um, up to the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, and it's interesting, actually, what this means to the Queen. Of course, in her 60-year reign, she has pretty much seen everything. But an Olympic torch running through the grounds of Windsor is something she won't have seen before. Back in 1948, during the London Olympics, she was just Princess Elizabeth. She was also very pregnant with Prince Charles at the time, and she didn't have an official role during the last London Games. Um, it will, of course, be very, very different this time round as she meets some of those involved in the Games this year. This time, as head of state, she will officially open London 2012. And she has, on many occasions, already been to visit the Olympic Park and monitored progress. She will, of course, in Zara Phillips, have a grand granddaughter taking part as part of the equestrian team. And as we see the Queen walking down the line here, she is uh, going to also meet shortly some of those involved in the Games back in 1948. We're going to see her meet here Michael Adams, who was a torchbearer back in 1948 from Torquay. Back then, he carried the torch ahead of the London Games. She's also going to meet George Whedon, who was a gymnast back in 1948 as well. So she's getting a flavour of those involved in the Games in 2012 and those who were involved back in 1948 as well. From here, the Olympic torch, once it's finished here in Windsor, it's going to be carried up the long walk in Windsor, that fantastic pathway up through Windsor Great Park by 12-year-old Philip Wells. It then moves to various other locations in Berkshire, which includes Ascot Racecourse, where uh, the gold medal-winning athlete Denise Lewis will carry the torch for a bit, as will Frankie Dettori, the jockey. But it's been a pretty grand day for the torch, I have to say. Uh, uh, the torch has already been carried by two knights of the realm, Sir Roger Bannister, of course known for breaking the four-minute mile, and Sir Steve Redgrave, perhaps our greatest Olympian. And now the Queen, here in Windsor Castle. And what you're seeing here is actually uh, an emergency wet weather plan that's been put into place. The idea was that all of these people would meet the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh in the quadrangle of Windsor Castle. Outside with the grandeur of the castle as the backdrop to the Olympic flame. But that wasn't to be. There has been an absolute downpour here in Windsor. Just at the moment, the torch entered the castle grounds. And there had to be a pretty radical rethink.
We can see the Duke of Edinburgh there talking to some school children. Some of those children were due to actually play handball in the castle quadrangle for the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. I'm not sure whether that is still going to happen, although the weather has eased up slightly. We can just hear some of those uh, children there telling the Duke of Edinburgh how honoured they are to be part of uh, the event today here at the castle. <laughs> and the Queen being shown the actual torch there by some of those involved in its design, its production, being talked through what it all means and uh, getting a close-up view herself. She hasn't actually handled the torch today. She won't be um, carrying it or moving with it in any way. She will see the torch again, of course, uh, on the, uh, at the opening ceremony when, as head of state, she will open the London 2012 Olympics. Well, finally, the sun is shining on Windsor and the Queen can actually go outside uh, here at Windsor Castle. What you're seeing now is the Queen accompanied by Lord Coe in the quadrangle of Windsor Castle. And this had actually been the plan all along. You can see some children playing handball um, on the grass just there. And the idea was that the Queen would meet everybody um, outside as part of this um, welcoming party for the Olympic torch here in Windsor. But literally the moment the Olympic torch went through the Henry VIII gates of Windsor Castle, there was an absolute downpour. There was a little bit of a delay and a bit of a rethink, and a lot of what has happened here had to go undercover this afternoon. But the sun is now shining again, and the Queen has come outside. As you can see there, meeting some of the pupils from Desborough School, uh, many of which are playing handball behind her, displaying their skills there for the Queen. The Duke of Edinburgh with her as well. He's uh, been talking to some of the students as well. And the Queen has had a bit of a mix, meeting some of those involved in the Games this year, meeting the designers of the Olympic torch, and also meeting some of those who were involved in the Games in London back in 1948. But a special moment for the Queen, as we have said, in her 60 years, she has seen and done pretty much everything. But an Olympic torch on home turf here in the grounds at Windsor Castle is something she won't have seen before. And Daniela, yeah, we're just looking at the Queen there in absolutely glorious sunshine, but we were watching you as you were performing that faultless commentary, cowering under an umbrella just a couple of minutes ago. Really extraordinary weather there in Windsor. Yeah, it was absolutely perfect till literally two minutes before the torch arrived. The clouds came over and there was one of those absolutely out of nowhere torrential downpours. Uh, and it's interesting that they did delay things for a little bit here. That Olympic torch usually stops for no one, but I suppose for the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, maybe a few uh, excuses could easily be made. And they did stop things for a little while, just while they reorganised themselves inside and moved things under cover. But yeah, extraordinary weather, but absolutely glorious sunshine now. And uh, just remind us, um, as the Olympics uh, creep ever, ever closer, what happens next with the torch? 
Well, from here, the torch goes to a number of other locations across Berkshire, and that includes Ascot. It's going to go to Ascot Racecourse. There it will be carried by uh, the gold medal winning uh, athlete Denise Lewis. She will pass the torch there at Ascot quite fittingly uh, to the jockey Frankie de Tori. It's had some of the most amazing success, of course, on the racecourse there at, at Ascot. It will then travel through a number of uh, other locations across Berkshire. Already it has been in the hands of Sir Roger Bannister and Sir Steve Redgrave, perhaps our greatest Olympian today. So uh, it's been a pretty special day for the Olympic torch today. Two sirs and a queen, so pretty good going. And we can just see behind you there, Daniela, large crowds, lots of uh, children. Have they been having a good time today? Yes, I think quite a few people who are still at school have been let off school today to come uh, and see the torch. And there was the usual entertainment put on beforehand for them. A uh, huge uh, number of people came here to Windsor to see it and bear that terrible weather that they all got caught in. Um, but yeah, an, an amazing atmosphere as we see it and a really spectacular backdrop, seeing that flame go in through the gates here of Windsor Castle. All right, Daniela. Well, thank you very much indeed, Daniela Ralph there, uh, reporting for us from a, a sunny and a rainy Windsor all at once. Sums up our English summer, doesn't it, Absolutely, really? Absolutely, but uh, it shone at the right time. That's it did. The main thing. Yeah. By the time the torch wound its way up Windsor's high street, the clouds were threatening, but the highlight of the day was never in doubt. On every one of the 53 days travelled so far, the team behind the torch have tried to ensure that it's glimpsed by as many people as possible and photographed in some of our most famous landscapes. Well, you don't get a much better photo opportunity than this one, whatever the weather. As the rain pounded the castle roof, the Queen and Prince Philip met torchbearer Gina McGregor and had a close-up view of the mechanics which accompany every transfer of the flame. Then away up Long Walk to the immaculate turf of Ascot Racecourse, where jockey Frankie de Tori had set himself the day's last challenge. Could he manage his famous dismount without an Olympic embarrassment? It was the perfect end to another memorable day. Robert Hall, BBC News, in the Thames Valley.